I hope you're all well. So today I want to show you how you can turn a drawing into an SVG. The first thing you need is of course a picture. So my niece has drawn this beautiful picture. There's two ways to get it into your computer. The first way is to scan it. The second way is to actually just take a photo of it, which is what I've done. I've just used my iPhone and taken a picture. There's a few programs you can use to turn it into an SVG. The first is a program like Inkscape. I unfortunately do not get on with Inkscape. For some reason, it just constantly crashes for me. It doesn't matter which computer I'm using it on, which laptop I'm using it on, it just doesn't like me. So I tend to stay away from Inkscape just because it gives me so much hassle. I use a free online SVG creator, which is really simple and easy to use. So if we go to Google and we type in pick SVG, it comes straight up. So you want to select pick SVG.com. You select upload picture and you can then select your picture and choose open instantaneously it turns it into an SVG for you. There's no messing around, you don't have to do anything with any other programs, you can come straight onto here, it's free to use and it's just quick and easy. You can also change the way the SVG is going to look. So there's several options you can use, some of them will really reduce it down and some of them will give you lots and lots of detail. So it's up to you as to which one you want to select. I'm going to go with this one, so I'm going to download SVG, select save, and then immediately I want to open up the folder so I know where it is. It will go into your downloads. I always then move it from my downloads into my pictures, just so it's easy for me to find. If you then go into your pictures, you'll see the SVG is there waiting for you. You then want to open Design Space and go into your canvas and select Upload. Go to Upload Image and Browse and you can then browse for the SVG. Design Space will open straight into your pictures, which is why I always move everything from my downloads into my pictures. It just makes it easier for me. You can then select it and go to open. You want to give your image a name and I also recommend putting a tag in as well. You can then save. Once it's saved, you can select the image and insert it into your canvas. You'll see we've got lots of different layers here. It looks intimidating, but I promise we're going to make it nice and easy for you. The first thing you need to do is ungroup it. Once it's ungrouped, you can then choose what you want to keep and remove. So I'm going to remove this, we don't need it. This little pen mark can go. And then all these other little pen marks we can also just quickly get rid of. So there's my image. I am ready to now colour it and then cut it out. So the first thing I want to do is actually work out what colour I want everything to be. And of course, the colours you turn them into don't have to be the colours that you're cutting it out in vinyl or iron-on, but if you want it in all different colours, then you need to come in and change the colours of each of your layers. So I'm just gonna select this person here, and I'm going to make them, let's just make them a lilac. And I also want to make the hand lilac as well. I then want to make the eyes green. And I colour everything first because I find it makes it easier. If we then come over to this one, let's select another colour. So let's go with blue. If I then click on my sun, we're just going to change a little bit of it to yellow. And then another way of doing it quick and easy to change all these pieces is if we go to Colour Sync, I can then just select and move down to that colour. And if I want to change everything, I can just select the whole black area and move it to the yellow. Go back to my layers, and then if I want to change the eyes, which I do, again, I can just change those to green. 
So now I want to just keep everything how it should be. So I want my sun to cut out as you see it. If I leave it like it is now, if we go to make it, you'll see that if we go to the map that my son's going to cut out on, it's going to cut like this. I don't want it like that. I want it to keep in its shape. So we're going to go to cancel and go back. So I'm just going to hide everything but my yellow sun pieces. So I'm just going to go down my layers panel and just click on the eye and everything that's not yellow, I'm going to hide it. I can then select everything and I've got two choices I can either attach them together or I can weld them now because it's turned into an SVG all the pieces that are overlapping are already what you would call welded so I don't need to weld because they're already a complete cut if however one of these pieces overlapped another so let's just move this and place it to there because that's overlapping, if I only attach that, it would cut out both those pieces. So if you've got pieces that are overlapping and you can see the joins, then you want to weld them. If, however, it's like this and there's nothing overlapping, there's no joins, you simply just want to highlight and attach them together. Welding is like super glue. So if you weld it and then save it, you can't unweld it. So if you're going to weld something, I always recommend saving first and then welding. Attaching is like uh, paper clipping something together. So you can undo and attach. But what it will do is keep everything in place for you. I then want to hide my sun and I want to bring back all my green eyes. So then each group of eyes I want to highlight and again, I want to attach them and this will keep them in place. So they will cut exactly as you see them. So when I come to transfer it all, it's going to be nice and easy and I'm not going to have to guess where the eyes went and where the pieces of the sun were. So you definitely want to take your time and do this. You'll see I'm not moving anything as well. So I'm keeping it all in its exact place. I then want to bring back my purple figure and again I'm just going to highlight and attach it all. So this is now ready to cut out. The only thing I want to do is highlight everything and I just want to size it up to the size I want. So I can simply just change the width and then it will keep it all in proportion. If I unlock this, I can change the proportion of it, but I don't want to. I want to keep it exactly as she drew it. I can then go to make it, and you'll see we've got all our different layers. And because, for example, with my son, I chose to attach it, it's exactly as I want it to be. With the eyes, because they're all the same colours, I just want to move them slightly so that when I come to weed them out and cut them from the piece of vinyl, I know which eyes belong to which eyes. We can then go to continue. We can then go to our cut screen and you've got so many different products to choose from. If you're using an Air or an Air 2, you'll have a dial on your machine. You can put your dial to the appropriate vinyl setting. If it's not on there, if you move your dial round to custom, you'll then come to a screen like this. If you've got a maker, you'll automatically come to a screen like this. You can go to browse all materials. I'm using vinyl today, so I need to choose the appropriate vinyl that I'm going to use as my cut setting. Please do remember if you're using different types of vinyl, different types of iron on, different types of cardstock, you will need to change your cut setting for each mat. As always, you want to put vinyl onto a green mat. And I always adhere my product to my mat using my Cricut brayer. The reason I use a Cricut brayer and not the scrapers is because with certain materials such as high shine, holographic, anything that's got a real shine to it, with a scraper you can actually scratch the surface of the material. So using the brayer means that you're not going to damage your material.
Just a quick tip when removing vinyl, cardstock, iron-on, pretty much any material from your mat, if you turn your mat over and you gently just roll it away from the material, it will stop the material from curling. You don't want to overbend the mat because you can end up snapping them, so you want to do it in small sections. But it is a great way of stopping your material from curling over. So my weeding tool of choice at the moment is the Cricut True Control Knife. I love using this for weeding. I love my Cricut weeding tools, but there's something about this, I think because it's got the cushioned uh, handle bit, that really works with me. I've always struggled with dexterity. So I love the feel of this in my hands and I can hold it for a long time as well. So I really do like weeding with this. When I'm dealing with difficult kind of cuts like this, where there's lots of small pieces, I always remove the inner pieces first. And you just want to start gently pulling away. and you've then revealed your design. So when I'm dealing with tiny little eyes like this, tiny little noses, tiny little mouths, rather than using transfer tape and all of those things, I just come in and transfer them myself. It's just easier and it's quicker, rather than messing around with transfer tape and weeding and all of that. So I'm going to add my vinyl onto this glass frame. There are several ways in which you can do glass frames. We'll explore those in future videos. But for the time being, I just wanted to show you how you can simply transfer your vinyl onto the front of it. You will need transfer tape. We're going to be using Cricut transfer tape today. I really enjoy working with Cricut transfer tape. I know lots of people say they struggle with it, but I actually don't. And with the standard grip, I no longer feel the need to de-stick it. You used to have to de-stick it a few times, but actually I haven't found that the last year or so. So I don't know if they've changed the, um, the kind of makeup of it, but it's a lot easier to work with now to peel it away from its backing and then place it on top of your design. You can then go in with a brayer or a scraper and I find that it's easier to give it a roller from the front, then from the back and then you always want to peel from the back. It just makes it easier and it gives you a lot more control. We can then place it onto our glass frame and I always like to hover it first, make sure I'm happy with the placement and then just place it straight down. I can then go in with my brayer or my scraper because I've got my transfer tape to protect my material and just really work that into the glass. You then want to come in and just gently peel away. If you find it's coming up, which sometimes it does, just help it along a little bit. Another trick if you're finding it's kind of coming away with the transfer tape is if you just get the transfer tape and wrap it around the scraper, as you pull the scraper and the transfer tape back, you're actually pushing the scraper onto your surface so it will keep your vinyl in place. I then like to go in with my roller again and just gently roll that in to make sure it's nice and flat to the surface and it's going to stay nice and adhered to my surface as well.
And there we go. That is how we turn a child's drawing or a picture into an SVG, cut it out in vinyl and then transfer it to something like a photo frame. Please make sure you subscribe to the channel and you hit that notification bell to be alerted of when I upload a new video. I hope this has been helpful. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you all again soon. Bye!